morning everybody. It is day three of scoping out the new Central Minnesota Adventure Trail. I think it's going to be a much shorter day than we've had the last two days. And I'm going to be basically running the south half to where I started on uh, Friday. Probably finish up, I don't know, midday, mid-afternoon maybe, something like that. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. The sun's out. It's a beautiful morning. A little nice breeze keeps the bugs away. I'm not sure what to expect today. I think it's going to be a lot of gravel roads, but we'll find out. It's been a great two days uh, since. I've had some great forest roads, some tricky forest roads, beautiful gravel roads. This is going to be a really, really enjoyable adventure trail. Once it's all completed, we get the kinks work out with uh, roads that are passable and gates and things like that. I appreciate you tuning in this morning and uh, stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. The drive out of Detroit Lakes was pretty much what I had predicted, running on some nice well-kept farm roads. I even started the day hitting a short but sweet minimum maintenance road. What I didn't know was later in the day, I'd hit some downright sketchy sections that threatened to leave me stuck so close to my finish line. But the trail this morning, just a fantastic way to start my day. If you haven't been following along with my previous two videos about the Central Minnesota Adventure Trail, I encourage you to go check them out. The links are down in the description, but I can get you up to speed. Today is my third and final day test running this all new 400 plus mile adventure trail. I started at the southernmost point of the route on Friday and should finish up at that point about mid-afternoon today, if everything goes as planned. I've been running it counterclockwise, so today is an easterly drive across the southern portion of the trail. I'll be hitting several recreational state forests, so I'm anticipating using the four-wheel drive in a few sections. This trail sits between Detroit Lakes and Walker, Minnesota, and offers up challenging forest roads, beautiful scenery, and a wonderful way to spend a three-day weekend. That little drive out of Detroit Lakes was pretty nice. Some twisty gravel, a minimum maintenance road. Well, I'm back on the, uh, on the highway where I had uh, Jump, kind of jumped off the trail yesterday. Not really because the trail does go to Detroit Lakes, but this is basically back on the loop per se. So I am headed east and uh, to parts unknown. I was only a few miles on the trail when I rolled into the Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge. Located just a bit northeast of Detroit Lakes, it's considered one of the most diverse transition areas in North America. Here you'll find eastern hardwood trees, northern pines, and western prairie grass come together. This unique ecosystem provides an ideal breeding ground for migrating birds and other wildlife. Driving through this lush green landscape just calms the soul, and I can only imagine the rich autumn colors here are nothing less than spectacular. This refuge also holds many Minnesota icons, including the common loon, our state flower, the lady slipper, red pine, morel mushrooms, wild rice, and of course, walleye. Here's a good example of why uh, we kind of pre-run these uh, adventure routes before we get everybody on them. Uh, this is a great road, it's a neat little two track and you kind of get into it and then about mm, half mile into it you find the private property do not enter sign. So that's kind of what we're doing, that's why we're running this, to make sure that uh, when you guys can all do it that it's uh, all going to be legal and up and up with everybody. After making a note that we need to rework some routing around this little lake, I was excited to enter into the Smoky Hill State Forest. Mm -hmm. 
located on the eastern side of Becker County. Smoky Hills is one of the three state forests on the south half of the trail that caters to those who love to have fun in the dirt. Not only can you camp fish and hunt for grouse here, but you can just sit and take in the beauty from the seat of your ATV or dirt bike. This 24,000 acre state forest has nearly 10 miles of ATV and dirt bike trails. You'll also find 25 miles of hiking trails and 30 miles of snowmobile trails. The Shell River winds through the forest and the shallow lakes and mix of thick hardwoods and pines make this state forest an ideal location for checking out the fall colors. All right, so the plotted route has us going up that hill. I'm not going up that hill. I don't even know if I do it on an ATV. We're definitely not gonna do it in trucks and uh, SUVs and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and double back to the intersection that was, oh, I don't know, a mile or so back. And then I'm gonna continue on and take the road I didn't go. And that should put us on the route past this crazy hill climb. So it looks like the super steep hill may not be the only reason to bypass this section. A hand-painted rock stating private property notes that this tiny strip of land is not part of the Smoky Hill State Forest. Okay, let's go see if this other direction will get us through. Well, that was definitely the way to go. I am back on the planned route and still going through this uh, beautiful Smoky Hill State Forest. vegetation, uh, roads that run right along the water's edge, really a pretty place. Right now I'm headed east on County Road 40 and it looks like it's going to be a few miles. Um, you know sometimes you just got to take the pavement to get to the fun places so there's a little bit of run here on the southern section that's on County Road 40. Uh, two lane highway, it's a nice highway. I gotta say that stint uh, from Detroit Lakes and up through the uh, Smoky Hills State Forest was very fun. Very pretty drive. Nothing really challenging, just uh, awesome gravel, great condition, and uh, very scenic. Since it was a bit early to top off the tank with gas, it was the perfect time to enjoy a granola bar next to one of Monaga, Minnesota's most famous landmarks, St. Erho, the patron saint of Finnish vineyard workers. Many Minnesotans here are of Finnish descent, and every year in mid-March, they celebrate St. Erho Day. Legend has it St. Erho chased the grasshoppers out of Finland, thus saving the grape crops. Now, if you could only do something about the annoying horseflies. Okay, I just left Monaga and I headed east and I just pulled onto a state forest road in the Huntersville State Forest and I got about, I don't know, 50 yards maybe and stopped. I think I'm going to pass on this section. Not saying it shouldn't be on the route, but it's definitely overgrown and I think I definitely would want an ATV to do this. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's been back here in a while. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the road and bypass this section. It looks like it's a good place to get stuck. And if I'm by myself, that ain't going to happen. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the highway and, and go around. Despite having downed trees blocking my way, I decided not to give up quite yet and make an entrance into the Huntersville State Forest just a bit further down the highway. Huntersville is another one of our state forests that has wide recreational use. There's a small campground, and don't be surprised to see it filled up with folks out here spending a weekend having fun on their ATVs and dual sport motorcycles. Huntersville also has two rivers running through it. Both the Crow and Shell rivers are ideal for those who love to canoe and kayak. Well, just to give you an update where I'm at, I am on the old Huntersville Bridge. I just got done running the uh, sections in the Huntersville State Forest. Uh, very pretty drive, um, but these forest roads have been carved and curved and banked by ATVU so much. So make sure you have a four-wheel drive vehicle and you have a lift. Uh, you're gonna need it. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty fun. And then watch out for traffic too. It gets pretty narrow and you don't wanna you don't want to go around blind corners too fast. Anyway, this bridge is pretty cool. This is the, the bridge that used to get you into Huntersville. Uh, it's now only open to ATV and motorcycles. No cars or trucks. It's, uh, it's not for that anymore. But uh, it's pretty cool. Well, the, uh, the route had a little offshoot that's kind of elbow shaped and it uh, jumps off the highway there where I pulled off but I could see a home and things on the other side of the trees so we're gonna have to change that because it looks like it hits private property and we don't want to do that <music> gravel roads for a few more miles anyway until I get to the last uh, forest technical section in the Foothill State Forest which will drop me south and pretty much back where I started on Friday. So I'm getting near the end of doing the entire loop so sit tight where it's gonna be fun.
was early in the afternoon when the frontier rolled into the Foothills State Forest. Located fairly close to the Twin Cities, Foothills is a 46,000 acre state forest that's very popular with those who love to do some off-roading. You'll find over 40 miles of ATV and dirt bike trails, as well as 11 miles of Jeep trails. You'll need an off-road sticker from the DMV, but it's well worth it. Scattered throughout the forest, you'll also find plenty of places to set up camp and unload your trailer. This is a heavily used state forest and sadly sometimes it looks it. It's important to remember to bring out what you bring in, mind your campfires, and just stay on the trails. Well, one thing I gotta say about this area is these roads are very well maintained. They've been graded and uh, they're fun. I mean, they're off-roading. There's lots of puddles and rocks and stuff, but they're just in really good shape. They uh, they're not really stricken with a lot of potholes or anything. It's just a just a very pleasant way to do a little light four-wheeling. and splashing my way through the Spider Lake off-road area and it's a very popular place you can spend all day long here if you wanted to but what it tells me is that I'm getting really close to completing my loop and uh, this is a great way to end it this is a fun little place to be as the route continued south towards where I started two days ago it came to a Y I made a left and I began to get a bit nervous. The trail got tighter, wetter, and more overgrown, and at times became a bit difficult to see. To be honest, after three days on the trail, the last thing I wanted to do was get stranded deep in the woods just miles from my finish line. That said, I cautiously kept going forward. problem. It goes here and then it does this. No way. Uh-uh. No way. <sighs> As I carefully made my way back to the Y intersection, it was clear the route should definitely go right instead of left. Again, another good example of why we pre-run these trails to avoid anyone getting stranded in the horsefly infested marshland. Well that was the sketchiest section I've ever been on. I got kind of freaked out that I wasn't going to get back. 
Uh, we'll definitely plan to stay more on this uh, wider, more groomed route. Uh, that that section got tight, got scrapey for sure, and then it eventually turned to impassable mud, and the bugs were horrendous. So that'll have to get tweaked. But man, that was sketchy. everybody 450 miles later I am back to where I started on Friday morning I've got mud I've got pinstripes and I've got a big grin on my face this north central Minnesota adventure route is very very fun there's a few things that need to get worked out some routing issues and things like that but you guys are gonna really enjoy it when it comes out it's challenging it's scenic and uh, it's, it's just great I, I, I love it it was a very very fun drive I know you're going to have a lot of questions, so I want to go ahead and go through some things now. Then so maybe I can get them answered before you even need to ask. Uh, but it is just a great drive and uh, very, very happy. Way to go, Jake. Nice job. Nice job. So here's a quick breakdown of the Central Minnesota Adventure Trail. It runs just over 400 miles and can be done in a stock 4x4 vehicle or on a dual sport motorcycle. I do recommend having a slight lift in skid plates for certain sections, notably near Walker and Akeley and in the Foothill State Forest. You can do it pulling an overland trailer, but some sections in the Chippewa and Paul Bunyan forests get a little bit tight. I would advise making notes to where some camping areas are before you head out. It can be a little hard to find them when you're on the trail, and recreational forest campsites may be filled up depending on the time of the year. To get the most out of the trail, have your off-road and state park stickers. Itasca State Park and the Headwaters are definitely worth a stop, but be prepared for traffic if you decide to check it out. Having enough fuel isn't an issue as long as you don't pass a gas station with only half a tank left. Also, be sure to bring recovery gear and a saw, as you'll definitely find mud and the occasional down tree. It's also a good idea to have that stuff just in case something breaks on your vehicle. Whether or not you run this trail clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to find ample spots to get out and hike, fish, or drop a kayak in a small lake. So this trail really does offer something for everyone. Well now I know I probably didn't answer all your questions, just go ahead and leave comments below. But uh, I gotta get out of here because the horse flies are going crazy and I'm about to go nuts myself. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed all three videos. It's uh, just a fantastic route and I can't wait to, to hear your stories when you do it. If you like this video, please give it a like. And a subscribe would really help me out too. I'm aiming for a thousand. And until the next adventure, I'll see you guys down the road. Thanks for watching.